Hey everybody, I'm Evan Hammonds for BloodHorse.com and welcome to After the Wire, which is brought to you by EquaAid, the makers of Bodybuilder, Air Blast, and other fine natural products. We had a pair of big time races over the weekend, so let's get to it. At Gulfstream Park, the 800 pound gorilla was six to five favorite Cairo Prince, but the son of Pioneer of the Nile would struggle in the stretch of the nine furlong Bessie Lou Florida Derby after a wide trip, showing grit well beyond his two start, two start career. Windstar Farm and Twin Creeks Racing's Constitution would be the one who would win the day and win the hearts of many in South Florida. Now, there was no surprise at the beginning. It was Wildcat Red who shot out to the early lead under John Velasquez, but they were able to set a very moderate tempo, 24 flat and 48 and one for the opening half early on while they were flanked by old friend General A-Rod. Constitution with Javier Castellano aboard was hemmed in really tightly along the rail and appeared rank, but eventually he settled down once they straightened away down the backstretch. Cairo Prince tracked behind Constitution, but was out in the clear. The tempo quickened with a 23-4 third quarter as Cairo Prince had to take the three path around the bend. There's a rule of racing. It says never give up the rail, but around the bend, Wildcat Red came off for just a few strides, giving Constitution a thin seam to get through, turning for home. And in the blink of an eye, Constitution gets through, saving valuable yardage as Cairo Prince still had to track the wide path. The young colt came through like he's been doing it all of his life. Then he fought tooth and nail with Wildcat Red all the way to the wire. There was also no quit in General A-Rod, but he couldn't gain any ground. Cairo Prince toiled out in the three path, giving up the ghost inside the eighth pole. It was also several links back to the rest of the pack. Now forget about the final time of the uh, final eighth, which was 12 and three. It was the fight and fire in Constitution, not the time that was important here. So now we have a hot derby horse. It'll be making just his fourth career start in the Kentucky Derby, bringing a similar resume as the likes of Monarcos and Big Brown, with one exception. This guy didn't make his first start until January. It looks like he has all the tools but he's gonna be bucking a lot of history. How about some quick background? Constitution was a $400,000 Saratoga sale yearling, and his dam is a half to MC, uh, Darley Studs grade one sprinter, who is now standing in New York. Also in the family is Spinaway Stakes winner, Awesome Humor. So the female side is a little sprint centric, but it definitely has a lot of class. As for Cairo Prince, he did have that nine week break from the Holy Bull to the Florida Derby. That may have been a factor. The team will press on, but then he's gonna to go to the Derby off just one start in his last 12 weeks. Also pressing on was uh, Vickers in Trouble in the Louisiana Derby. After having a rough run of it while breaking from post 13 in a 14 horse field risen star stakes, the Louisiana bred got a favorable draw post six and a favorable pace scenario and was never threatened under Rosie Napravnik in the Million Dollar Derby in New Orleans. Now he broke well, but Commanding Curve did not, who got pinched back at the start. Commanding Curve would wind up running a sneaky good race to rally from well back to get up for third. Intense Holiday, the nine to five favorite after his score in the Risen Star, was in no hurry early under Mike Smith at the start, got a good position, but then had to inch his way forward down the backstretch to keep within two lengths of the leader. In Troubles, bumping with Albano on the backstretch saw the second choice DQ'd from fourth to fifth. Intense Holiday was in tight as they reached the turn, but got clear and then made his run, which was at the right time, but at the same time was in the teeth of a 24 and one quarter that was thrown down by Vickers in Trouble. That would be telling as the field turned for home, an intense holiday veered over to the rail and it actually looked like he brushed the fence. At that point, we all knew the race was over as Vickers and Trouble cruised to the line despite a 13 and three final eighth. That 13 and three final eighth is probably what helped Commanding Curve in his late rally up the rail to uh, get within side to get pretty close to intense holiday. Now, 
We'll be pitched two more curves next week with the Santa Anita Derby and the Wood Memorial Stakes at Aqueduct. We'll take a look at both of them right here at After the Wire.